I'm hacking the mainframe. Hello and welcome to the In Between Podcast. <laughs> Sorry, I, I, I wanted to steal it from you. Right, so what, what you're seeing here, this looks like numbers to you, but to me, you this you've, is... You've seen this a lot. You're, you're used to numbers. You, you interpret the data this, yourself. This looks like, you know, strings of data to you, but this is Roblox. <laughs> I'm playing Roblox right now. And you've got some nice typing here somewhere as well. I'm just changing my DNS to 1.1111. Yeah, we increase our speed to get our hacking uh, levels increased. Uh, welcome to the Whack It, Don't Tap It podcast. Post. Look, it looks so big on my 1080p Yeah, no, that's crazy. to the 4040p one. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> I've been playing Steam World Dig this week. Oh, both okay. of them. I played both Steam World Dig one and two, um, and they're really fucking good. I'd highly recommend it. I thought there was like a gap between Steam World Dig one and two. There was like a yeah, like four year gap or something. Yeah, I didn't realize how old the first one was. It's two thousand and thirteen. It, look, it looks pretty good for two thousand thirteen. And then indie this game. one came out in two thousand and seventeen. And so the first one's pretty simple. I was showing it to Dave, and he said it's 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 motherload from mini clip. And I was like, it's kind of similar, but it's, yeah. it's a lot more like thought out and like features and stuff. And it's got a cool story. And then I played the second one, and I wasn't sure about it because the second one it's kind of like if you want to know more about the first one, you can watch Steam World Dig One Spotlight on it, and he'd be talking about the second one. Uh, but the second one adds a lot more features. Like they have like an XP system now. Oh, okay. And they it's have not like, just money now. It's, no, it's, it's you have like gadgets as well. So you collect these things called cogs, and you socket them into. But you have like a bunch of upgrades, and you can put cogs in certain things and take them out. Mm. It's like a kind of like that sort of tech tree. So you decide that what you sense. want and when you want it. So there's yeah. like, and as you upgrade each individual piece, so if you upgrade your pickaxe, you're mm-hmm. like a cog for your pickaxe, like. You can now um, you can now explode gems in like a one by one tile. It's it's very much about a resource gathering game to get like more resources. That's my kind of game. I I, I really should actually, I don't think I own even the first Steam World Dig yet. I'd uh, I'd highly recommend. I yeah, really I, enjoyed Steam World Dig. And yeah, it looked it looked too. it looked fantastic. Like. I think in the spotlight we had to like a puzzle bit, didn't we? And I got really confused. <laughs> I actually when I went back to that puzzle. It made more sense. No. No. I looked up the answer on YouTube. I, what? I was like, Fuck, really? I don't care. I just want to okay. play. I just want to dig more. Let me get to the like, puzzle. I like the idea of a digging puzzle. That was that's kind of fun to me. Hmm. It's interesting because of the physics. Like there's yeah. a lot of um There's boulders falling on like impassable blocks sort of physics and you have to like hmm. get the order correct. Yeah, but it is kind of hmm. like, you know it it's hard it's got it's kinda of like a puzzle platformer in a way it's kind of like a resource gathering game in a way yeah uh, but basically you play like a little robot and your task is in the first game you play as rusty and you find that there's like this cult of robots mm. who are trying to blow up like the world and you kind of stop them and then the second and then you kind of it blows up and you get lost in the mines and then you play as this this girl who in the first game was a shopkeeper but now you go into the mines and you're trying to find rusty there's a much more like in-depth story to like Steamworld Dig Two. It's more like refined and actually, yeah, okay. there's a lot more characters and it's a lot more. It's 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 like Steamworld Dig One, but it's more fleshed out. The characters. And I think, in... it, I think Steamworld Dig the improvements really make it into like an a, yeah. an epic game. Like if I'd played this in 2017, I think it might be on my games of the year really? list for okay. 2017. I would I would have said from Steamworld Dig One that like the characters were interesting but like completely face value and they didn't actually do anything. Like, I, I don't want to spoil anything, but there's a point in the game where the game goes from being just, like, dig a hole in the ground to, like, almost like a horror game. It's, like, crazy. Okay, that's interesting. Yeah. yeah. In, in a way. But I, I won't tell you where or how, but, like, the game does, like... The original Steam or Dig was very much dig a hole, and then it had a couple of different sections, kind of like Spelunky, so there was, like... It, it, I see a lot of parallels to Spelunky in this game. Like, there's a, there's like a different level where there's like robots and stuff. Yeah. You have to fight those, and there's like lava bits and stuff. Like Diggy Spelunky instead of looting Spelunky. Yeah. yeah. Ways. But it's very cool. I really like the physics, the tile-based system where every tile you can break, and kind of you have to use the puzzles to get around that. Yeah. We 
they they've changed some of the tools so now you get like instead of um you know have like a launcher where you launch like a, a grenade there's like a sticky bomb onto the wall and stuff like that there's lots of different stuff eventually at the end you get like a, a jet pack and stuff and that okay. completely changes the game but it's like every every time you get to a puzzle you're like there's always like one way to get around of it and then Every time you get a new gadget from progressing through the story, it completely just changes the way you play the game. Okay, so actually, the gadget's almost more powerful, but more interesting. Yeah, more, like the, more the mechanically tools. interesting. Yeah. Like, and like, let's say for example, from the first game, you had to buy a teleporter, and wherever you put the teleporter, uh, that's where you teleport to. And then if you move that teleporter, it was just like single use. But now there's like uh, tubes built into the game now, so you don't have to buy. An individual teleporter. Okay. Um, and then you just go through these nomadic tubes, and it's like a fast travel system through the world. In one way, I'm like, oh, that's really useful. In another way, I'm like, it kind of takes away from the strategic element of having to place like the teleporter and uh, buy it with money. Yeah. To solve thing. One th- that was one thing with Steam World Dig One is it was kind of impossible to buy all the upgrades if you bought um, health. So now what happens is every time you go back to town, you refill your water, you refill your health, you refill your light. Mm. But beforehand in SteamWorld Dig 1, um, you didn't regain health um, mm. by going back to town, so you had to like, uh, you had to buy your health back and stuff, or buy lamps yeah. so that you could place down, so you could get more light around the mines. And that meant that you came to a point where you just ran out of money. Right. And it was really hard to like... Um, but I think I'd, I'd say this game's a lot more is a lot more user friendly in a lot of ways. Yeah. Uh, and there's a lot more stuff you can do. Like if you like, there's a in the first one there's a big boss fight at the end, and this one has a big boss fight at the end as well. So if if you get to the boss fight early and you can't do it, you can of course go and grind and you know get the upgrades you need without worrying about you know running out of money, because there is a lot of like late game upgrades that will make the boss fight a lot easier. There's one you can get where it's like five cogs and you have to get the maximum armor unlocked first. And then instead of when you lose all your hearts, instead of dying, you come back to life with full health and you oh, can okay. fight again for one time before you die. Okay. So that makes like the boss fight like way easier. Yeah. Um, but it's, it's kind of like a Metroidvania game in a lot of way now because um, there's like the XP system. There's like you oh, going okay. around collecting items. Yeah. It's just like the, the, the digging mechanic makes it really fun. Mm. Um, but I would highly recommend this. I would say it's almost, you know, my like a game, be- best game of 2017 in my opinion. I didn't play it in 2017. I got it recently as it was free on Twitch Prime. Shout out to Twitch Prime. As, <laughs> Getting the free games. As, as Ninja would say, don't smash it. <laughs> um, don't tap it. Whack it. Do you, does anyone else out there remember those Terry's Chocolate at Orange adverts? Where they had the Terry's chocolate orange and they had like a rolling pin and they were trying to open it up and they couldn't. It's like don't tap it, whack it, and they like <laughs> whack it with a rolling pin to open. I the find that it's a design orange. flaw for this chocolate orange. Surely you can't uh, they, easily they open it. They had like it. those Dawn French ones where she was yeah. like, "It's not Terry's, it's mine." Those ones I remember the most. Yeah. Terry's chocolate orange, they're mine. I've been playing a bit of Civ Tech as well, actually. You um, actually played them? Yeah, I've you... played a bit of it. See if I can find it. Probably have to explain what it is to some people. So, well, actually, Civ- no. Everyone who watches this podcast knows what it is, right? No, I don't think so. CivTech is like a tech tree based Minecraft. CivTech Ages, I think it's yeah, called. It's um, SSE, not SI. Oh, sorry. <clears throat> All right. See if I can find a good image of it. I really, I really like just like the um, the um, starting menu look. Yeah, it's really cool. Pretty well designed and like explains what you have to do. Well, other than the first so the one, idea, first... so the idea of like mo- um, modern Minecraft is that you can have like advanced technologies like electricity. We well, can go to space. Um, <laughs> you can go to space. You can, you know, you can get infinite. You can do like magic and stuff. Yeah. But the 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 idea I always found is that I would get very powerful technology and then a lot of the mod was useless yeah because i already advanced very quickly to a point where i was very strong which is why i invented my own tech tree in the, uh, the last so, we played. so tony invented his own tech tree where he would write down what he needed to yeah. do but somebody actually had the same idea and was like 
we'll make a tech tree that you can't use this other technology or these blocks don't even spawn yeah, until like, you advance through these ages. So SevTech mod pack uses a mod called I think it's called Game Stages. So they've actually like like actual ores don't spawn until you reach a certain age. Yeah. So I think at the start there's like no ores or something. And then when you reach age zero, it so, starts spawning. So for cult. example, like um you start in caveman age, which is cave uh, which is stage zero. And you I can't think, like I think you start at minus one technically. No, it's called zero and you go to one. No no but I think before like, even before like, right at the start, like you you start in minus one, you then get like the work table which then brings you to zero. Then no. you then get one thing to stage one. You, you get stage one when you get the normal crafting bench. Unless no. they've changed the numbering system. No, it's zero, zero at the start. Okay. And you just press L and then it'll tell you what yeah. you need to yeah. do. But I've played from zero to one, mm. which is the start. Yeah. So, like, it's, for example, in the mod, you can't cut down trees by punching them. No. So you have to, you have to like, get flint from gravel by putting it through a mesh. Yep. And then you hit the flint against rocks to sharpen it. Yep. And then you attack them to sticks, which drop from tree leaves. Yep. And, and you, then you, you string as well, you fire as well as you attach it to the sticks. Yep. You can make like little. You can make fire like a caveman and go ooga ooga and like oh, dance yeah, around it. <laughs> Two sticks. Yeah. Have you, have you started fire Totemic sticks. yet? I start what? Totemic, like What's totem totemic? poles, and it's like no. you have to start music to be able to like get buffer. I literally and... was just testing out the mod and trying to get it to run properly. So yeah. I've just gone from like cave, like stage zero to like early caveman okay. age, stage one. So I haven't really done that much. But like for example, um, they have like a it, uh, did it come out like a month ago out of out of like beta or something? Yeah, I feel like a month ago because before it was only like released to like YouTubers, I think. But um, at least it properly. Like to get it to run, there was like they added a text mod. You know, like normal Minecraft text is like very blocky. They made like a smooth text, and that they, took up like they added like anti-aliasing to the text, but instead of adding anti-aliasing, they just added new fonts. It was called it's called the smooth font mod. Yeah, but that actually took up like three gigabytes of rendering data just <laughs> yeah. to turn the the uh, font smooth. Um, so I removed that. And like remove some some like better foliage ones. I remove some to get it to run. Basically, you want to just remove some of the cosmetic mods. Yeah, so and allocate more memory to it. The better foliage one is like like I have like a love hate thing with it. So I like the look of like it has like I don't think it's an, there's an option in it where like you can create round logs. I don't think yeah. it has the option enabled in SevTech. But but in SevTech it has it so like it has like furry trees basically. So it's like not blocky. All oh, right. But I kind of prefer the blocky trees sometimes. Then other times I don't. But yeah, it does like massively hit your performance like that mod. So yeah, I would like, remove it because I just had to like get my head around using the Twitch launcher because I've never used oh, it yeah, before. Yeah. So I had to like figure out how to is weird. allocate more memory to it, and you know, uh, you can you can remove the mods through the Twitch launcher. Yeah, you can, once, you can, once you, you can just disable it as well. Yeah, you once have... you get used to it, it's pretty pretty good the Twitch launcher. I just find it annoying to try and get into, like, when you launch it, then go to mods, then go to Minecraft, and then you have the list of stuff. I just wish you could just, like... The way I found out about Minecraft. it, actually, was I was just browsing through the top Twitch channels, and I saw someone was streaming Minecraft, and yeah. I was like, oh, big, uh, Giant Waffle streaming Minecraft, and yeah. I saw it was something called SevTech, and he was, he was on stage four, I think. I was like, wait, what's stage four? What's SevTech? <laughs> so I looked it up, and I saw, oh, that's a really interesting mod idea, so yeah. I wanted to try it out, and you said... <laughs> Would we be interested to play on a server yeah. with it? Um, I think it'd be interesting. I don't know, yeah, because you said we had to have another mod to get like the um, combined. Cause I the, think it's um, together with friends. Yes, it syncs up the advanced because you, that's how you, it's linked. The way the mod works is you each you would on your individual like single player game you have to advance through a system, but in order for it to work you need to sync each individual player's advancement to the same tree. Yeah. So if somebody builds something, everybody builds it basically. Yeah. Uh, otherwise it would like break the mod. Um and also if it's if if on my personal client I removed smooth font, better foliage and stuff like that, you'd have to remove it on the server as well, otherwise they wouldn't be compatible. Yeah, because for whatever reason they're server the mods as well for some reason. Hmm. Even though they shouldn't be. But yeah, I play a little bit of that. And I'm also playing Fortnite, as always. You mean Fortnite? Have you been playing anything this week you want to talk about? Um, 
I can say what I said about Guild Wars, but that's what I've been playing. You've just max leveled on well, Guild Wars. It took me all week. <laughs> we don't we don't have an image for Guild Wars, but I, I will say that Guild Wars is a thing. It uh, exists. Yeah, no, the last um, week I think I had three or four characters that were below level eighty, mm. and I got them all to level eighty. And you said you had every class at level eighty now. Yeah, so so now that's my first stage. But every class level eighty. Then I had to go and get more hero points from the new areas, which each hero point drops 10 hero points. Yeah. So then unlock the new classes, basically. Like, the two... Every class has two other classes you can unlock. And I've got all of them bar one unlocked. They're like specialisations. Yeah, they're called elite specialisations. But they are basically different classes. They completely change your class, basically. So in, like, World of Warcraft... So in Guild Wars, if if you're, like, a WoW player, like, in WoW, they're called... A class, but in Guild Wars they're called professions. Yeah, sort of. No, the like the actual characters are called professions, and then the special, yeah. Then and then the what you would call a spec is like a specialization yeah, in Guild yeah. Wars. So those kind of line up as well. It's yeah, it's pretty much the same. If they're just done a little bit differently, but yeah, I've got all of them bar one. Like, what's the different forever. Mesmer spec? Um, so obviously Mesmer. Those who don't know, Mesmer is the one where you, you create clones of yourself, like mirror images, mm-hmm. and then you can like shatter them, and you do damage based on that, and that you distract so you don't take damage yourself. Yeah. The specialization in Heart of Thorns was called Chronomancer, which manipulated time. You so could like, like for example, go back in time to a previous spot where you were, where you, like, you, have, like, you create like a ghost image of yourself. So for example, if, if you were playing it. like a mage in WoW, and you were playing a frost mage, that's the that's the equivalent of playing a chronomancer. Yeah. Um, but the different mesmer. The only difference is is that the base mesmer is still like a viable class. It's not like you could, you could say you basically just like put all your just stay as mesmer. I'm I was just trying to translate it because I know yeah, not, no, yeah. not everyone's played Guild it's, Wars two. It's but based, a lot of people have played like yeah. It's basically wow. it's basically the same. It's just a bit weird that like the base class is also a viable class. I, as I well, would though. recommend Guild Wars two. Uh, but I also haven't played as much as Tony or the expansion. So. You can also play it for free. I don't know how that works, but you can play the Guild base Wars game for is free. free to play. Yeah. yeah, you get you get two character slots, but everything is locked behind specific levels. Yeah, which I find annoying because like Lion's Arch is like locked behind level thirty five or something. I'm going to Lion's Arch to level. Yeah, 35. and I go to Lion's Arch all the time when I'm leveling. Okay. I was like, well, there is no subscription fee for Guild Wars no, 2 either. No. It's completely free. That's why it's full of microtransactions. Yeah. Well, they have to, it, it was the skin most, customers. What did we say? It was the most profitable game of 2016? I think it was the third. Or it was second. It was Overwatch and then Guild Wars 2. Yeah. Because of the massive uh, gem system, which is the uh, currency of Guild Wars 2, right? Which can also be bought with in game gold. But it's not yeah. too bad. And it's mostly cosmetic it's items. It's not too bad. Apart from utility items such as extra character yeah. slots. And it's a bigger backpack as well. Is that one of the utilities you can buy? Uh, you can buy more bag slot spaces. Because you, right. you, you have to craft or buy bags. And then yeah. the 20 slot bags is by default the biggest one you can get. But you can like get bigger ones, slightly mm-hmm. bigger ones. And there's like oh. uh, mount skins now that you've bought. You've bought like a glider skin. Yeah. You can buy glider and mount skins now. Mm-hmm. But they've added... But yeah, don't buy them if you don't have the Can you use the mounts in all of the regular zones? Yeah. What's the point of the glider now? Um, it's kind of just there is there is use for gliding sometimes, but I I do you're right you use mounts yeah. more often. There are there is like I feel like it kind of made it obsolete. Sort of. You, sometimes you you can't dismount in there, which I find weird. But oh, but right. sometimes it's useful, especially in the Heart of Thorns maps, because mm-hmm. you they have gliding like updrafts. The Griffins right. can't use them. But with Griffins, there's, an, there's a perk where you can unlock where you can mount in air. I was randomly on the Guild Wars 2 subreddit the other day, and if you, I saw there was a gif. If you using the skimmer over water, mm. dolphins will start jumping up oh, really? after you. Yeah, I thought that was pretty cool. That's pretty cool. I saw, is that one of the skins, or just by default? I don't know. I was because I, I was on the Reddit. I was. Much. It was around April 1st because I was looking to see if they released the Super Adventure Box Level 3 yeah, and they which haven't... they still haven't no, I don't think that was the biggest April Fool's joke they didn't do anything I don't think well according to the, the little NPC that runs the, the Super Adventure Box he, he fixed some bugs apparently yeah well I assume <laughs> that there was bugs with the game that they fixed oh they, no that's not true they did add, they, they added stuff to like, the, the lobby actually they added a race getting 
keep talking about Guild Wars 2. They added um, a, a lobby. Like, there's some. For you, for the Super Adventure Box for April Fools is like you go into like a cube and it's like you you lose all your stuff and like you're just like um a pixelated world basically. But they added yeah. like a, a race where you have to like do jumping puzzles to like complete the race. And to make the last part of it easier, they made it so you can turn into a bee which you can fly around the lobby. Oh, okay. So you can actually turn into a bee for a bit. Which is great. And then you can fly Speaking into the sun, the sun and die. <laughs> oh, that's what I've always wanted to do. <laughs> a big smiley sun. Anyway, I think it burns. I think it burns you actually. You fall, you die instantly, and then but like a burning animation activates, and you didn't spawn at the start. So. Okay. Well, you've been playing Guild Wars two. I've been playing Fortnite, as always, the number the, the... one game in the world at the moment. <laughs> yeah. I think they've actually hit the point where they're the number one free to play game in the world on console. Oh, as well. Okay. Yeah. That's crazy. They're the biggest console game right now, as well. Uh, so version 3.5 on the 19th of April, they added the LMG. I think it's really cool. Uh, I, re I like it. I, I keep it as like a secondary assault rifle, similar to like the scoped AR. The good, the good thing about the LMG compared to the minigun, I think the minigun is still pretty weak. They, oh, really? they okay. did buff it. They gave it a 10% damage increase and they made it um, reduce recoil by 10% as well. Uh, but I think the thing that makes the LMG so good is that it has 100 rounds in it as soon as you pick it up. Okay. So it comes with 100 assault rifle rounds, which is really fucking useful. Whereas compared to the minigun, you don't get any light bullets in it. So that's I think that's something they could buff the minigun with if they made it the minigun come with like 100 light bullets already. Yeah. Um, that would really put it on the, a similar power level or probably below it. The big problem with the with the mini gun is that um, it takes so long to start up. It takes like a, a, a good couple of seconds, so you're very vulnerable when you're firing it. You can't fire it from cover because you'll always shoot your own cover with the mini gun. Oh, right, yeah, because you yeah. hold it underneath, uh, don't you? So. so you're very vulnerable to getting shot, mm. and it takes so long to open it, uh, open fire with it, that it's usually just not worth taking it, in my opinion. And especially. We need to do way more damage to be. Useful and there's also not a lot of light ammo on the map since they removed light ammo from the revolver. There's right. like a lot less light ammo than there was. So I think potentially that I could see a couple ways that they could buff that item as well to make it a bit better. But yeah, that was pretty much it. They added the LMG and they added 50v50 V2. So this time uh, for 50v50, it was one. It was the original uh, limited time game mode. They now have two buses spawn on separate sides of the map okay. that go up and down. Um, and then you, you meet in the middle. It shows you where the final circle is going to be. Yeah. And you meet in the middle okay. to fight. So you get a chance to all loot up um, separate sides of the map and then you all meet up for a big epic fight. Because the big problem was like there wasn't enough loot to go around. So they've like, oh, up, they've, right. like upped the loot spawn, they've upped the ammo spawns. Yeah. It's pretty cool. Then we had version 3.6 as well, uh, which added the Klinger, which is basically a sticky bomb. It looks great. <laughs> uh, yeah, it does. It's like uh, it's like a plunger tied to yeah. a bomb, which is pretty cool. Uh, one of my favorite features is they let you now build on um, fences. Oh, it's 3.6 they did the minigun increase. They increased the damage by one. As well. Um... But they, they, they're so annoying when you're trying to build and you can't build uh, on a fence. But now it will destroy the fence, which is really fucking okay. useful. They also change supply drops a little bit. So now they spawn twice as high, but they drop twice as fast. So initially right, you're going, yeah. what difference does that make? But the difference it makes is that you can now see them easier. Right, okay. So you'll be able to see them in the sky earlier, which means there'll be more contention around them. They also change the health of the balloons based on what you're playing. So initially they all had the same amount of health, which meant they were really easy to take down in squads, but yeah. they were hard to take down in solos. So now solos have less health, so you can shoot them the balloon quicker, and duos have less, and then squads have bigger health pull. But yeah. Also, in for I don't know if I've told you about the meteor that's coming for... Fortnite. There's no. there's been a massive meteor spotted in the sky. What? Uh, yeah, it's been it's been there for a while. Right. And it was in Save the World as well. 
and people were saying it's going to blow up tilted towers. That was the oh, no. theory. <laughs> um, there's now been like they've been doing this really cool ARG because now like there's t- all the TVs in the map now have like an emergency broadcast signal on it. Okay. Um, there was they, there was a sound from the meteor, and they put it in like a one of those graphs where you can turn waves into a picture. I don't know what they're called. Oh, yeah, it's like a sound. But there's a there's a dance yeah. there's a dance in Fortnite called Take the L, where <laughs> the scenario is one does a dance, and if you transcribe the sound, it's just the Rust Lord doing the Take the L dance, just <laughs> kind of troll thing. Um, but now, as you play the game. Meteorites. There, there was a shooting star scene, right. and now as you play the game, meteorites start hitting the ground, and they added a. Uh, Does that do anything though? Yeah, it blows up buildings. Oh, okay, right. So they've actually added kind of like what Dave was saying. It's kind of, kind of like the red zone in PUBG, but it's right. completely random, and they seem to intensify as the map goes on. Okay. But they, they, I don't think they do any damage to you, uh, but they can blow up your building. So if they destroy something you're stood on and then you can like fall to your death and stuff. Yeah. And they're pretty scary when they start flying past you. Um but they also added like um a sign to t- the on the top of the tilt the towers there's now a sign that says a love heart with tilt the towers on it and it's got a sign that says today crossed out and then it says tomorrow on it. <laughs> okay. Doomsday tomorrow. Um and it was like so they've announced like a superhero theme uh for the next battle pass. Uh, so now the theory is that um, that the meteor might bring a superhero down, kind of like you know, like my I was thinking it's kind of like Superman, yeah, where they send him on an alien spaceship hurling to Earth, and he the meteor is an alien, yeah, like and they'll or like the meteor will give people superpowers, and that's how they'll do it. Um, uh, someone a couple of days before. Uh, the season pass was announced to be superhero said he leaked that he said it's going to be superhero themed so people were like oh this guy has some validity because a couple of days before it came out he said it was going to be superhero themed and he said it's not going to hit tilted towers it's going to hit dusty depot okay so they there's a potential like rumor now that the meteor is going to hit dusty depot which is an area that's very old and could use a lot of work right okay. that, um i think personally would be a very good idea to redesign it and he said that'll get here it'll be redesigned and then next um ne- on season four every week they're going to change the map it's good to- they've said before epic they want to constantly evolve the game and i think it's really cool because like on Fortnite, you get like a new patch, like pretty much every week, yeah. which is like unheard of for most games. Where well, it's completely changed the game every week, and they're going to be constantly developing the map because they originally went from the first map to the improved map. Yeah. And then in season three, I think sometime they added Lucky Landing, which was a new point of interest. Okay. But I think they've been working on a lot of point of interest, and they're going to try and uh, very rapidly improve the map time and time again. They've said officially. Um, they want to work on improving this map before they make a second map uh, where, similar to like PUBG now has two maps. Yeah. They have Mir- uh, Miramar I think is the original map. They have like the desert map and then they're m- making the jungle map which is the yeah. 4 times 4 which actually uh, is, fast paced one. Which, which actually is like decent. Uh, Aztec jungle or something. Yeah. My biggest problem with Almost. PUBG is it doesn't have any like visual interest. But then the, the new map actually looks okay. Yeah, it looks pretty but good. Fortnite still looks better, in my opinion. But... Yeah, I think Fortnite has a very distinct art style, which is pretty cool. But I, I, like, I like vibrant colours and things, so mm, that really same. helps it. But the cling is really cool. There's some pretty cool interactions. So you throw it, and then after 2.5 seconds it explodes. It can stick to structures, and it can stick to players. So if I, you just run, you get like a clear in your head, and you're like, oh, shit. <laughs> you I can't to... get rid of this. You have to take the damage. It does around 100 damage, so if you don't oh. have shields, it'll just like one shot. They're pretty hard to land, though. Yeah. Um, what's, there's some cool interactions, like you can stick it to a friend, and then if they run at someone and explode, it will kill them. It won't kill your friend, yeah. but it will kill them. That's, yeah. <laughs> it doesn't break the boogie bomb, so you can make someone dance, throw, a cl- throw one of these on them, and then shoot them, and then they'll explode, which is pretty cool. Um, but yeah, playing Fortnite. There's- Many combinations. We'll move on to the news. Uh, so the first piece of news is about our good friend. Actually, uh, sorry, 
they just did a post mortem of the service outage, and this is basically just showing you like all the information about um, what happened to the servers, how they fixed it, and it's really cool to see. And as a seasoned hacker myself, I can just show you quickly, you know, what this all means. It means this. <laughs> I mean, on, personally, I have no idea what any of this means, but it's, pr it's pretty cool to see the transparency of like some yeah. epic showing. Hey, we have an issue. This is how we fixed it. It can help out like other developers making networks yeah. and servers and stuff. You can't. So pretty cool. You can't be a good graph either. There's some. There's some nice graphs they've got as well. There's some cracking graphs. But our good friend, the master of the dice, the master of the RNG, Ben Brode, is leaving Hearthstone team. He said to my friends, co-workers, and Hearthstone community, after 15 years of Blizzard and almost 10 years working on Hearthstone, I have made the incredible difficult decision to embark on a new journey. Basically, he says he joined Team 5 in 2008, uh, and then he's going off to start. He's, uh, I'm going to start a new company, we'll probably make games, but we haven't figured out anything else yet. So he said he's going to be, he, he, he went from the lead developer to the overall game director, and he was more in like a PR term. Yeah. And he said he wants to get back to making games. He That's wants, kind he, of his passion. He wants to make his imbalance cards again. He's putting the flannel back on. I should have worn a flannel shirt in in honor of Ben Bro. Yeah, I forgot. Um, can't wait to play the next card game where you roll five dice <laughs> in order to see if you win. You 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 start the game by rolling five dice to see who goes first, and then take damage. Five d twenties. <laughs> yeah. And then you take damage based on the d twenty. <laughs> yeah, but then you then you roll for the armor and how much damage you you prevent. So now I'm quite excited to play Artifact, the Dota 2 card game, the Bizarre yeah. Raynads card game, Even though Artifact and got Ben Brode's new game. Yeah. Even though Artifact got a ton of shit, I actually like the look of Artifact. Yeah. I don't know what... I, think, okay, I, think I, I do know why it got a ton of shit. It got a ton of shit because... Not for the, the game, though. The initial reaction was, oh, that's kind of underwhelming. They're making a Dota 2 card game instead of like an actual Valve game. Yeah, but it looks valve so though. It's not a Valve game. Yeah. And, then we'll, and uh, speaking of... Segway. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just gonna segue onto <laughs> Valve buying wow, okay. Campo Santo Games. They've now Valve has bought the developer of Firewatch, and the next game in the Valley of Gods will be published by Valve and will be considered a Valve game. Um, With all the universe, in universe ties to Half Life, and oh, no, probably. And in the blog post they posted on the Campo Santo website, um, they've said everyone at Campo Santo will remain employed. They will go on to work at Valve uh, with the next game, which will be expected to come out in 2019. Uh, they have, there are 12 people working there. So they're actually almost merging them with Valve, not yeah. keeping it as like a separate entity, as like how sort of EA does for a little bit and then merges them. They're not doing it like immediately. So my initial reaction to this is um, <laughs> that the... Th Kind of my theory would be that um, because kind of like Firewatch is a um, it's a kind of like a walking simulator, and that kind of genre of game works really well in VR, like yeah. being able to walk around and interact with things. Could the Valley of the Gods, um, in the in the Valley of the Gods, be turned into a kind of a, a Vive VR yeah. flagship title? So they, they've thing. bought them for their experience for making things that would work well with VR right now. Yeah. Whoops. I guess that, that that does make sense. I feel like that's, that that's gonna happen, but mm -hmm. you don't know. But why buy? But why buy them now? I guess actually, yeah. If you're, if you're gonna incorporate them to VR, okay, yeah. They said both sides spoke about our values and how, when you get right down to it, we are human beings and hardly limited by time we have left when it comes to. We we are hard limited by time we have left when it comes to making things we care about and believe in. The post continues, they asked us if we'd be interested in coming up to Bellevue and doing that there. Yes. Well, they're a 12-person team, so I think the idea was it would take them a really long time to put in, make it to the quality that they wanted to make it. Yeah. So they need the extra resources and people from Valve to help th with their vision, basically. Mm. My number one question is, Will Valve DMCA PewDiePie yes. who plays this game in yes. the Valley of the Gods? Because if you don't know or you are unaware, the bridge um, incident. 
after the bridge is so PewDiePie was on a bridge, <laughs> PUBG, yeah, and he said the N word. And after that, there was a huge backlash, and Campo Santo Games themselves said, "We are going to DMCA all of PewDiePie's videos on Firewatch, and we'll DMCA every single video he makes on a Santo um, Campo Santo yeah. game." My question is, if PewDiePie decided to make a video on, um, in the Valley of the Gods. Would Valve DMCA them? Would Santa Campo Games yeah, DMCA would... them? F- be able to DMCA yeah. them f- if they're under Valve? Because I don't think Valve would DMCA a YouTuber. I don't think they want that well, kind would... of negative press. Would it be incorrect? It'd be the incorrect any... DMCA. But you, you look at like Valve compared to um, an in- a small indie developer of twelve people. Mm. They, you know, you've got different priorities there. So I'm kind of interested to see. I think PewDiePie said officially. Uh, he wouldn't be covering any more Campo Santo games no, I think, because he res- respects them. I think he respects them because I think he really liked Firewatch and that really respects the devs. So. Mm. Even though they don't respect him for obvious reasons. And they obviously misuse the MCA, but I understand what they're trying to do. But I don't, yeah, I don't feel like PewDiePie would ever cover their stuff just out of respect. He might talk about the game and say he likes yeah. it or something, but I don't think he would make a video on it. I just it. think it's an interesting idea, what would Valve do if that comes about? Yeah. How, how, it, it would bring up the idea of, well, how much you know, power does Campo Centre Games have under Valve? Yeah. So Time will tell. Time will tell. Anyway, next topic is about the PlayStation 5 rumours. Basically, the play- there was a bunch of rumors about the um, there were elaborate like fake rumors about um, a PlayStation Five was in development and have you know crazy hardware. Um, but pretty much what came of this it was like the PlayStation Five is a thing that is probably does exist, but it's yeah. way 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 off. But in the same way that like they probably started thinking about it as soon as they. I like got all the bugs fixed for PlayStation Four though. It's like they're, they're always trying they're, to look they're for new technology, like, and when they want to release the next thing to make basically money. Basically, what came out of this it was like Sony is working on a PlayStation Four, a uh, PlayStation Five. Yeah. But it's really far off from development. And they're yeah. using like they want to use like the AMD Ryzen technology uh, because it's like some of the best processing technology right now. They want to like use the new GPU technology. They want to make like a proper flagship console. Yeah. They, they like big step ups in their technology normally. They don't like But the, the thing with consoles is you need to make like a really powerful system that um, is cheap enough that people will buy a console. With it. Well, you, they, they make losses initially. That's how they do it. Really? Yeah. Okay. Both, I think both PS3 and PS4. PS3 definitely. And PS4, I'm pretty sure did as well. They they start. But the thing was, the Xbox 360 beat the PS3 to the market, and that's how yeah. they got a lot of their sales. It took the PS3 a long time before it started making the money back. PS4 did it a lot quicker. Yeah, but if you want to know more about kind of the potential technology it could have, you can of course read it up. I think this is Digital Foundry. Yeah, look at like the Digital Foundry video and see them talking about like. Where technology is and what yeah. could be in it, they know um, this stuff. But the PS Five won't be coming out anytime soon. Uh, there's also another rumor. Um, apparently, a top secret Two K studio is now working on a top secret new Bioshock game. That's from uh, a news editor, Kotaku. So we'll have to see if that rumor is true or not. Potentially, there could be a new Bioshock game, and I would love to see where that went. You know, we've seen Rapture. We've seen the Sky One. I don't remember the name of. Do you remember what the what the sea this... was called? No. Oh, what? Rapture is the one underwater. Yeah, yeah. yeah but What's the one in the sky called? Columbia. Columbia. Yeah. So we've seen Rapture. We've seen Columbia. Where would it? Okay, this is pure like rumor speculation. But if you were going to make another Bioshock game, where would you set it? You personally. Yeah, I'm just thinking like because. Like both those are quite unique, and like what you can do with like, them. Like I loved as well. the idea of an underwater sea. I thought that was amazing. Yeah, and I, I like the idea. Of, so I, I, sky stuff as well. Is oh, cool like a me. moon one. Imagine like yeah, I was thinking of like in a crater, or, like in the moon or something. Yeah. Imagine kind of like um, what's it called? Uh, prey. Like imagine, oh yeah, yeah. Imagine like 
you're in the middle of space and then you have like all these modified um humans or creatures that have been genetically was... modified by like this Adam stuff. I was think I think for me personally, I really love to see like a, a city like like you can have like a huge crater being like you dome it over, then you, you think, build inside to that. That'd be really I cool think the idea that. was like of Rachel was it's hugely claustrophobic because you yeah. couldn't ever leave because you were surrounded by you know the ocean. And the idea of Columbia was you could never leave because it created this tense atmosphere because you could immediately just like fall off the edge and like plummet to your death. Yeah. So I, I think. The only thing that if if they were looking to go the same way as like Bioshock um, One or Infinite, uh, they I think space would be like a very good idea for me personally. It would, it would fit the universe somewhat as well. Mm. I don't know. I I I have this funny thing they won't do space yet. Yeah. I feel like they'll do something else, but I don't know what that would be. Because the only thing I can think of is like underground, like a vault or something. Oh, underground, yeah. But that's, mole people. Yeah, I don't know though. I don't think you could do more with space and underground. Though, they could but... have like a, a co- they could have like a mining colony. Yeah, that was underground. Then they were getting like power from the core. Yeah, but they like bull rocked it and they awakened something. <laughs> they dwarfed. They it dug up and... too deep. <laughs> As for the usual. mines of Moria. Yeah, I don't know. I thought that they'd, they'd be more grounded first, but maybe they'll go crazy. I don't know. Or maybe it'll be like a open world again. We we've no idea. Pure speculation. I think a new Bioshock game would be cool. Uh, so next, Star Wars has re- is, um, released the Night of Endor expansion, and it's like Ewoks versus Troopers. It's everyone's favourite creature, uh, the Ewoks, which for some reason get a lot of hate, and I don't get it. Because they're shitly implemented in the Silk film. But like, <laughs> I understand like a bunch of teddy bears with sticks probably couldn't defeat Star Troopers, right? No, they definitely could. But have. based on the aim of the Star Troopers in the films, I think they could. <laughs> no, because even like a crazy American with like with no aim could kill a ton of stuff. A crazy American. Yeah, and they're trying to the... say something about gun control. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm saying like they have the bad aim. They have armor still, right? Yeah. They have spears. And logs tied to with yeah, ropes. but they use the power of the forest, the environment, <laughs> and that can be a heavy arm. This is a AT- this, this is a what's it ATST? This is the, this is a global warming message. Well, like Avatar, the, the film. They not, have the, not the they anime. have the power of surprise. They, they have the the sixth element, the element of surprise. Wasn't the fifth element love? And the sixth element. You're saying the sixth element is is surprise. Yeah. The element of surprise. It's the surprise element. The okay, element yeah. of surprise. It's only to make a film about that. But apparently there was some community backlash from this. Um, they've been overhyping skins since December. Uh, there was data mines about Clone Legion skins and countless mods unlocking these skins. In this update, they decided to not release these skins. The game's supposed to have content for all the Star Wars errors, but they keep adding original trilogy stuff. Uh, most of it was already in the last game. Right. Not focusing on the community wants the prequel era content. Um, I wonder where the people want prequels. I guess they want to see the prequel stuff in a better light than mm-hmm. the actual prequels. That doesn't make sense. They've been hyping up hero skins. Uh, now we get seven skins, two of them in the game file since launch. One of them adds a scar to Kylo Ren. One of them adds a bandage to Chewie. Another adds a hood to Yoda. What? <laughs> uh, where's Pink Darth Vader? Yeah, where's Pink Darth where Vader? Where is Pink Darth Vader? Someone already Pink Darth Vader in, right? Mm. But um, angry, angry Luke. Where's that one? No. But speaking of Star Wars, uh, we also. Oh, what? 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 Oh, I put this. Okay. <laughs> EA's new chief designer promised promised to avoid repeat of Battlefront Two loot spot controversy. Uh, so basically, yeah. he just said like, I promise, I've definitely. I've learned from the backlash from Battlefront 2's mistakes. <laughs> but it's hard to, you know, it's hard to believe, you know, what they say. It's, it's a new chief designer, and he vowed to learn from the mistakes from the company. What they all say. Because they've had this massive reshuffle at EA, there's been like a lot of like changes to the management and development stuff. I think I'll say what um, I said about something else EA did before. I, I believe it when I see it. Yeah. I think this is this is pretty much just we 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 have we're gonna pretend that we've learned from these mistakes. They always pretend they learn from their mistakes, though. Yeah. 
When have they ever learned from their mistakes, though? That's yeah, what I want to know. Anyway. Next topic. Uh, PC 1.0 update 10. Um, China cock lock. Um, <laughs> oh, is this... Okay. <laughs> so this is, some people have been spamming region lock China and add map selection and don't add map selection. <laughs> and then one of them was just like region lock China and then someone said... Um, it was like... Clock China. China cock lock. <laughs> well, so people are still spamming for them to um, region lock China out of the game because of the huge influx of Chinese hackers. Actually, recently there was like an article about how some of the biggest PUBG cheaters were like arrested by the Chinese government. Really? Wow. Yeah. Okay. Uh, PUBG cheaters. Find it 15. 15 arrested in connection with PUBG cheating programs find a combined total of 5.1 million um, but I think the reason that they were found um, was because the uh, hack program included a um, a virus in it oh okay uh, here we go yeah it includes a, a Ho, Hojizai Trojan horse a Chinese backdoor virus hmm uh, which allowed the hack to control the user's PC, scan their data, get their information illegally. And that was the reason that they were able to track down the cheaters. I thought it was kind of interesting. One big yeah. thing they added in this, uh, that's the wrong way, in this patch was they removed clothing spawns. I think that's a huge thing. Like, it's going to improve, like, how quickly you can get a gun now in PUBG. Because, like, if you don't know initially, you had clothing spawns to, like, a random trench coat or something would spawn on the floor instead of a gun you could pick it up and wear it yeah which was cool for people who didn't have like you know the um you know the crate skins and stuff and could put on like the jackets and stuff but it pretty much just ruined the flow of the game nobody picked them up they were kind of just there nobody really wanted them so i think that's a big improvement where they've you know removed these useless clothes spawns and made it so you more consistent guns um I, I, I like the direction the game's going. I think it's really interesting to see the 4x4 four four map. I'll be interested to play that as well at some point. I did play Radical Heights, but that's just... I, I can't stand Radical Heights. It's it's not even a game at this point. Like That game is in like super early access. The Lawbreaker one, <laughs> where they shut down Lawbreakers I, and they made Radical Heights, and I'm like, yeah, I'm going to uninstall that. It's like I watched Jim's video on it, and it's like, is that really it? Is that yeah. the entire game? Apparently they developed it in like a couple of months or something. I'm like, yeah, I can tell. Yeah, <laughs> it looks like it. So we got another story about uh, Cliffy B, the uh, ex Gears of War director, who then went on to make um, Boss Key Studios. He made Lawbreakers and then Radical Heights. He's claiming that Fortnite is stealing his developers and putting them on the Fortnite team. So he took public shots at the former employer on Friday because he used to work for Epic Games under um, Gears of War. Yeah. But and now Epic Games makes Fortnite, and he's now made his own studio called Bosky Studios, who went on to make Lawbreakers and Radical Heights, which is another battle royale game. He's claiming uh, that the uh, Fortnite studio has been poaching his developers from his new Radical Heights um, battle royale game in order to work on the Fortnite battle royale. Hmm. What do you think of that? Um, do you think it's true? Do you think there's... Well, I, I wonder how they're doing it. <laughs> Zinsky has a long ported controversy by lambasting specific camps of game fans and creators. When Lawbreakers was announced as a PlayStation 4 console exclusive, Blazinski described Xbox fans as salty in one interview. He once described Notch as pouty over the developer's decision to not sport Oculus Rift. In 2008, he blamed slow development of major PC games on fans who are savvy enough to know bit terrain, to know all elements so they can pirate the software. He seems to like blaming a lot of people for a lot of problems. Yeah. Other than take responsibility. I think, Cliffy, that your company's in a shit position that would rather work at uh, Epic. Yeah, I think that's. I I don't know though. I don't know. You mean you mean what practices are they doing which you, you think are bad? Well, like okay, I've got a lot. Of, basically, from what my perspective, my personal opinion, my when I saw Cliffy B had a really successful time working on Gears of War. He went, oh, I'm a good game developer. I can go off and I can make a class based shooter sort of thing. Yeah, 
and Overwatch comes out, and nobody gives a shit about that, and everyone wants to play Overwatch, and then Overwatch dies in like a year almost, and if, and then so like I think there was Is literally Overwatch like. Dead? Well, it's not. It's not like dead in like. No, it's not as popular. I guess it. It. It's nowhere near as popular as it no. was though. Um. So Overwatch isn't even that popular anymore, and that was like the thing stealing all the players from like other games like Paladins or Lawbreakers or yeah. those other sort of games. You have two, as of course. It's still what dead. dead may never die. Uh, but it has gone down on the Steam user charts since they banned a bunch of botting accounts. So I think that was one of the things that was pushing TF2 up there. Yeah. Um. So, yeah. He makes this company, he fails with this game, he makes a really rushed Battle Royale game, he goes, oh, I, can build, I, I can take this hype and I can build something, and then there's huge backlash from the community, there's huge backlash from people playing the game saying they don't like it, it's, it's rushed, it's not finished, it's yeah. not good. And I think he's just trying to save face right now. So I, I personally don't see a problem with just hiring people from another company like you don't owe them anything there's not i don't think it's like i don't think morally it's bad i don't think it's legally bad to, to go from being the guy who made gears of war to being the guy who made radical heights <laughs> it's probably a big shift for cliffy b personally probably yeah so i think at this point he's trying to make sense of it and he's going well it must be this reason it must be this he's got no devs how can he do anything yeah I, know, I don't know Cliffy B personally. Pure speculation, pure yeah. conjecture, but I think I self-reflection comes from within. I don't know if he, how unspecific he is about the practices he's, he's calling out. Yeah. This is my point. It's like, he just says that the hiring from like, like the people that were on his team are now being hired at Epic, basically. Mm-hmm. To me, that's not a problem. That's just like, well, if they want to work there, then, and they offer them more money... I mean, if someone's like, do? do you want to work on Radical Heights or Fortnite? <laughs> I think I'd I wouldn't even, Fortnite. Yeah, I wouldn't even care about money. It's like, yeah, I'm going with... Because imagine, like, the next job after this is like, right, I what, think... what's, the, what's the last project you worked on? Oh, Radical Heights. Feels bad. I think Fortnite made, like... Fortnite and iOS made $15 million what? in the first three weeks <laughs> on the App Store. Okay. That might surpass PUBG in monthly revenue it, um, it, to 126 million a month. That's crazy. Fortnite makes so much money, it's insane. Like, they can afford to, you know, hire more people to yeah. work on it because, you know, nobody else is going to want to work on a shitty early access Power Royale <laughs> game that just isn't worth playing. Which came out of nowhere, and I assume. Came out of Clippy's imagination just to try and salvage what he's got. You fucked over people who were legitimately enjoying a game that just wasn't going off because you didn't have the player base. Yeah. And then were like, oh shit, we're going to turn this into a rush battle rail game. Which just did, didn't work. I don't think will work. So I would... I don't... I don't want to say, like, you should just give up. That's probably not good advice, but... I think you just stick with what you do and, like, if you believe in it, like, try and... Advertise it. Try and like really. I mean, try game, your best games have got second lives, but you can't like, yeah. you know, well you rely on that, right? Yeah, but he pulled out and destroyed its original life, so he can't have a second life. He's just creating, and he's basically created he's a Frankenstein's second life. The game. <laughs> yeah, he's created a Frankenstein's monster from his previous game, basically. Yeah, that's what I, that's what I see it as. Uh, and the first game looked way more fun than his current game. That's what I'm going to say. Should we talk about your favorite game, Tony? Yeah. Maple Story 2. I have no fucking clue. I know that Maple... So basically it's just a short news announcement. They, um, well, you say that. Nexon said they're going to make Maple Story 2. I've never played Maple Story, but I understand its cult following <laughs> and its importance in gaming. I know a lot of people Bef love playing it. Before you sent me the Maple Story 2 trailer, I had no idea about Maple Story in really? any way. And I just looked and was like, I just was dumbfounded well, the entire trailer. I'll just, I'll just trailer. read the top comment from Reddit after this was announced, <laughs> which is, fuck Nexon. What does that mean? I think Nexon are the people who made it, and they. I think the original Maple Story was very different to what this is, and they okay. kind of changed it. You not um, still play the first one? I think so. What's the problem? I don't know. But I think people wanted like a more advanced system. Okay. I don't know. To me, it looked it looked like anime Club Penguin. 
Anime with, with Club blocks. Penguin. Yeah. That's what we'll call it. Anime Club Penguin 2 is out. It may be good, it may not. I don't know. Not Notch's... Notch's I know it's news, there as well. but I'm not interested in it. I'm interested in it, but I'm just because I'm so confused by it. I want to know. I, I like the animations of it. Well, <laughs> people are saying they were looking forward to it because it's very. So the original original story is like two D. It's like right. kind of like a t- Terraria style looking game. Okay. Then the, the the I'll just show the trailer quickly. The, the, this one's going to be like more of a d- blocky three just... <laughs> D one, kind of similar to like Minecraft. I don't mind. I I'm, I'm okay with blocky stuff. Personally, someone said so. it. Do you remember Portal Knight? Yes. There was another game. Oh, it's not Portal Knights, sorry. I was thinking of Spiral Knights. I was thinking, have you played Spiral Knights? It was like free to play. Uh. Hang on. I'm like, I need to go through all the knights. There's like Shovel Knight. It was a free to play game. The reason I oh. played it was because if you played it and got to like a certain part, you got a hat in TF2. They had like a, <laughs> they had like a cross promotion with TF2, what? and it's the only reason I think anyone played this game. But yeah, this game existed, but it's not Maple Story 2, but it look, it kind of looks like it in a way. I prefer Maple Story 2. <laughs> Slime Rancher. What? what? The, wait, let's go back. <laughs> guess, snail. Let's see that again. A new dimension. Slime that Rancher. That Slime dimension. Rancher. They, they've stolen Slime Rancher. It's, it's even, isn't there like a, a Digimon like that as well? <laughs> it just, it's just Anime Club Penguin is all I see from this. <laughs> We need an anime club penguin. The bastards at Disney shut it down. First they came for Toontown. I'm just. And then they came for Club P. I don't understand, Joe. <laughs> I don't know. Maple Story is a thing that exists. Here's an, here's a non object. There's a an objective review of Maple Story Two. Maple Story Two is a thing that exists. On the internet. On the so. internet. Maple Story 2 might be popular. Okay. We'll, we'll see, I guess. So, GOG did a thing where they were like teasing a, a mass giveaway of games based on user wish lists. I think this is a really cool idea where they would make it, the top wish listed games super cheap. Um, it makes sense. That was pretty cool. I know. I know. Wasn't there like a comment like, "Oh, let's just add everything to my yeah, wish I'll list." Yeah, I'll put every game on my <laughs> wish list. Uh, and then also, Gigi introduced user profiles for social butterflies. So this is kind of similar to the Steam profile system. Uh, if you don't know, uh, Gigi is uh, completely um, DRM free, but you can download the optional Gigi Galaxy, which allows you to have like a library of all the yeah, games you I... own. And now I have achievements really like um, rollback on previous patches. Yeah, um, you can now have a user profile, so you can um, show off like what games you've been playing, kind of customize it, like use that to look up friends and stuff. Pretty cool. I like the idea, um, but I just I, I don't think I have anyone on GOG. I like GOG Galaxy. I use it, but it's pretty much I use it to play The Witcher. Like, yeah. I don't think GOG is anywhere near like competitor to Steam, but I don't think anything is at this point. But it's, it's good to have competition. Yeah, it's its own thing though. I think it, it works in its own niche. And yeah, I I'm think glad like, it exists. For the PC gaming market, it's like Steam is for um, just like for general gaming. Yeah. GOG is like the. the um, GOG is kind of like for the. Um, oh, what, what was I saying? Judy is like for the DRM free. Oh, games. isn't they kind of like older, up to date? They 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 re-release a game that's able to be. Yeah, they that actually run on modern old systems games and they sell them to their store. Yeah, it's GOG stands for good old gaming, so that's kind of like their their niche market sort of thing. And then you have like Humble, which gives like lots of lots it sells a lot of bundles of games. Yeah, and you know also has the added benefit of giving to charity. I think those are like the three main marketplaces for gamers. Not Razor store. No. <laughs> not Razor's digital store. Yeah, you can get coupons or I guess points for coupons. That was last week or two weeks ago. Gwent. 
Gwent Homecoming is basically they're going to redevelop Gwent. Um, a lot of people are saying they were watching Gwent slowly transform from the unique strategy card game to its current state. Um, they like, you know, originally Gwent had like the lane system where you yeah. could, like fog down and ice down, and they completely removed that sort of system and they homogenized the rows, and there was just nothing different about the rows basically. Oh, okay, that sucks. It was like a unique strategy card game, and they were trying to like simplify it to get more people to play it. We made um, no one want to play it. But with Gwent Homecoming, they're going to try and um, upgrade and revamp the um, systems. They want to bring re- back the Witcher. <laughs> yeah. Oh. <laughs> they're saying Homecoming. Basically, what well, they're saying is that Homecoming will have a dark aesthetic yeah. and mood. Um. But yeah. They, they also have the Gwent Thronebreaker, the single player campaign right, as well. Okay. Um, but I think this is interesting to see. I haven't touched Gwent in a really long time, so I'll be interested to see like, how yeah. this changes the game. The old Gwent looked really good, and then... With, with Gwent, it was like, mm. I'd play it, and I'm like, this is really fun, but I keep losing because I'm really bad. Yeah. It's like, I think that was maybe a barrier for a lot of people, was like, it was very hard to... There wasn't... There wasn't it was many... very hard to, like... Fully get into. Yeah, there wasn't any people like, like there wasn't as many people were, like teaching people either. But like, then they were like, they were like, oh shit, okay, we'll change the game, and then a lot of people were pissed off. It's like, well, you took away the unique strategy. Yeah, the bit I liked, even yeah. though it's difficult, I liked the the <laughs> idea of it. Anyway, next topic. Uh, so there was a Minecraft virus that was uh, basically what happened was nearly fifty thousand accounts were infected, um, or shown as infected by a vast by um, malware uploaded via Minecraft skins as PNG, and in the PNG vi- uh, file, they put the virus into it. Um, so yeah, it's not necessarily crazy. skins found on third-party websites, but they were downloadable from Minecraft's official domain. Um, yeah, it was, actually, it was actually hosted on their domain. Like It was just people uploading their skins that had this I think this it was just, it was just the Java it. edition. Um, yeah, I think... affected. So they said they wanted to make a clarification that even though the the code was um, in the skin file, the code they put in bold, this code would not run or be read by the game itself. No, it's. I think they were probably trying to inject code, and it's like, oh, it's, it, it, Java doesn't read it like that, or doesn't actually run it unless specifically calls for it. But the antivirus was like. It was, was detecting it, yeah. the yeah. code, and that's where they got the report from. Yeah, uh, they said to further protect our players, we developed an update that strips all of the information from skin files, apart from the raw <laughs> image data. Notch, why wasn't that the first thing you did when you created this is, the skin? So this the so the idea that we had was this is Notch's revenge. <laughs> Sleeper he was skins. Put back de- he was developing all the top Minecraft skins <laughs> to get them into the Minecraft game files, and to um take down Mojang from the inside. Sleeper skins. Sleeper skins. Anyway. Very clever, Notch. We saw right through it, though. That doesn't run. Should we move on to Tony's wish list? Should we have a look? What's Radical Dungeons? I think about? we've only got one thing we're talking about, but I'm, I'm happy to talk about this. Alright, we'll talk about this one thing. Escape every floor. Find the so, key. Find the do door. You... Escape and make... Do you know the safest path. Do you know Minesweeper? Yeah. I've never been able to play Minesweeper. Okay. I'm really bad at it. Basically you may not like hit the bombs and things. Yeah. So this is different because you're in a dungeon, so like you, you're trying to find the way out and the, like, you can see there's like a locked door. A way out. There's a locked door. A film. And you need to get like, these two keys. You need this to find the keys basically. Me. It's basically a roguelike Minesweeper. I don't think I'd play this. It looked great. I would suggest, I don't know if, if Dodger does buzz or anything, but I was watching Dodger play this. She got more views than Gwent on Twitch by just playing this Minesweeper roguelike. Well, that's like. not hard. Gwent in 2018. L-U-L. No. I think it only has like 2,000 views. Rip always plays Minesweeper when he uh, is waiting for people to have their Hearthstone turn. <laughs> that's a, interesting in between. Yeah. Okay. But no, I, I think it looks really cool. It was, it was like different characters, yeah, I, and there was like health this, things. I think this is a very Dodger game. I, it looked fantastic. What are these cards, though? That's what I'm I don't. By. I never saw the cards, but you could like level up and get abilities. I don't know what the cards are. I don't know if that was like a... a... You have like slots over here. Yeah, there's also a store as well. You can get um, upgrades and things. 
I don't know what these are. They look completely different to it's what I saw. It's basically like a way more advanced Minesweeper. It's, it's like inspired by Minesweeper. Instead of bombs, it's like enemies you have to then kill and they don't take as much damage to then get through to the next level. And right. then you, you have like a certain number of turns. I think the thing on the right is like a turn timer. Well, not a turn timer, but how many turns is you've got left. Is he the Wraith? Exorcism. Do yeah, I, I guess. He must be the Wraith. He's trying to kill you. <laughs> Alright. I don't know. It looked very interesting. And uh, it's... It's ten pounds, which I think I don't know. I don't know how I don't know how much the game actually hold, holds, but I might wait for it to go on sale, and I'll definitely pick Let's it up. Look at reviews quickly. So we're reluctant that I'm passing on this one. It's a roguelike mind super with fabulous artwork, and the problem is there is no really there's no way to really win the game. The quest is to find a dead man's rotting testicles. Yes, you heard me right. <laughs> You'll see them served in a player every time you start the game on that long loading screen, and when you finally find these sexual organs, they levitate away. <laughs> Tell me what the incentive here is. For chasing a pair of runaway testicles. Okay. It says about... After about 15 hours, I can say the game turns out to n not too repetitive because they had 44 achievements, 8 characters, there's a decent amount of runes, and there's a decent amount of monsters with specific stats, yeah, spells I think and behaviours. For those that want to try and complete something, then this isn't for you by the sounds of it, but if you want... Mm. If you just like having fun with this type of... The gameplay looks good to you, you just want to keep playing it for no good reason other than the gameplay itself, then. I think this game is fine to be on your wish list, but I don't want to play yeah. it. I would say that they should probably link Dodge's video to this, because she makes it look way more does fun. Does she have a than... creator page on Steam? Uh, she does, yeah. I'll look at that, then. I don't know if she's actually... <laughs> well, usually people just, like, write a short sentence yeah. and then link to their video. On I know the, the, when I watched it, it was the second time she played it, or at least at, at least the second time she played it. Right. So, um, well, so it looked great. To kind of, my looking opinion. at these cards, I was like, "Oh, it might have some like card building elements." It's like this week actually, cool. I forgot. Um, I was playing the new Hearthstone game mode, where it's similar to Dungeon oh. Run, but you play like yeah, you play new classes now. They released it two weeks actually, after the expansion. I was actually out. interested in that, but never looked into yeah, it. Yeah, it's pretty cool. I recommend playing it because it's completely free to play. So okay. you can just log in and play it instantly. Okay. And it's just like... You don't need to have anything. No, it learn. gives you a pre-made deck, and yeah. then you play a boss, and then you choose a treasure, and then you choose what cards you want to add to your deck, and you're just okay. trying to get to the end. Yeah. And then when you die, you have to start again. Yeah. So it's like a deck building, roguelike like It's like, a, it's game like mode. you start with like a base class almost, with its own deck, and then, you're then yeah. like, you then swap out to what you want. The bosses. I'll just read the etymology tweet. Disappointing to see path choices visualized as a diagram tree in Detroit. Imagine if your path was creating a pet animal with different choices resulting in different features. At the end, your pet comes to life and sits by your side slash grave. <laughs> Wouldn't that be better if your visualized choices were instead of pet? I never see at the end of the game. Why can't it come? Why don't you just have like um? Do you know like the, like the Golden Compass books? No. I don't, I don't... They had like a, like they have like little demons. It'd be cool if you just had like a little demon next to you, and your choice is. Oh, okay. Sorry, I cut you out halfway you through. You cut me out because the endings. I switched to the ending screen, but it doesn't have audio. Oh, okay. Oh, I was saying like, oh, I don't know what I was saying. Um, Golden Compass. Like I don't. That's not. That's not the name of the book series. But that's the name of the first book. Yeah. They have like little demons. Like everyone has like a demon. I feel like that would be a massive Peter game if it's like your choices affected what the, the, this little demon looked like. Your little companion, your little pet. Oh, but I think that's the end of the podcast now. Um, I've been Joe Scornbrace, and I've joined here by... Tones of Tones of <laughs> And uh, that's the end. Goodbye. Bye!